kill team kill with the with the fucking bear. That shit was hilarious. Seth when that Green guy was that dying. One, yeah. Uh, that was probably that was probably <laughs> yeah. the guy. He was like he was like tell 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 my wife. That's Seth Green, yeah. <laughs> I fucked her sister. <laughs> I was just like, dude, I was fucking. <laughs> What's up, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Los Wise Guys podcast. I am one of your hosts, Eslam, a.k.a. Rock God of the Sun, accompanied by Dan, the Emperor of Discos. What's up, bro? What's up, what's up? How's it going, everybody? It's going great, man. Uh, and then our other co-host, Danny, a.k.a. Papa Sunk Killer. I'm going to get that right every time, I promise you. It's my new oath. Hello, how are you gentlemen doing today? <laughs> uh, good, Not good. so bad. And we are accompanied by special guest, the number one fan of the Los Wise Guys podcast, Henry the Killer Fox. How's it going, Henry? Hi, hi everyone. I'm doing good. That's great to hear, bro. And on this special episode with our special guest, we had to bring him in for Love, Death, and Robots Volume 3. Um, so... Love, Death, and Robots Volume 3 just came out like a week ago or something. And um, we're like, we are a big fan of the uh, show, the anthology series. So we had to review it. Um, uh, so we're going to go, we're going to start off with our initial thoughts about the whole Volume 3. And then we can get into like the nitty gritty. Um, I'm going to start us off. Uh, I loved this season so much. This season to me was like, an equivalent to season one, uh, volume one, because when volume one came out, I was like, I was blown away by like uh, all of it. Um, volume two, I felt like they kind of like were, I don't know, holding back a little bit with the stories, but they were good nonetheless. But then this one, they came out swinging hard and, uh, it was very hard for me to pick which one I liked the most. I, I think I pretty much almost liked every single episode that, uh, I've seen in this uh in this volume um so yeah so that's me um who wants to go next i'll go next i uh i you know yeah especially like as i said coming off that second season it was kind of a little softer a little maybe like you know more friendly less yeah. crazier but this one it was just i found myself watching and i was just like oh that was pretty interesting like yeah. with almost all of them they had something to offer um with that said, they all do have something to offer, but I do have a top three. Uh, okay. So nice, I'll nice. give that list after, though. Okay, cool. Uh, Dan? Um, I liked it. I liked it a lot. Uh, season one is the best to me. Um, mm -hmm. uh, this one was better than season two. Okay. Uh, I agree with what you guys were saying with season two. It's like it didn't hit as hard. Uh, season yeah. one, it came out of nowhere. No, you didn't know what to expect. Uh, yeah, season yeah. two, it didn't quite get there. Um, this one... The there's one episode that stood out to me really, um, but that one episode was enough to put it over season two for me. Um, okay. So th a lot of it was just I feel like it was by the numbers, mm. but um, there there was one uh, in particular. I'll, I'll I'll get to that later. That I was like, this is incredible. I I I loved it. Um, but, Damn, uh, I kind yeah. kind of want to guess which one it is before you say <laughs> it later on. But yeah, we'll, we'll get, get to, to that we'll in a second. Henry, what do you think? Um. I've never seen season one or two, so this is the first season of Love, Death, and Robots that I've seen. Ooh, interesting. I've got to say that. That's interesting. I That's interesting. definitely okay. want to see season one and two, see the, uh, yeah. which one's definitely. better, I guess. Because <laughs> right now I'm like, yeah, I liked yeah. it. I did enjoy watching season three. Okay. Uh, any specific episodes stand out to you that you want to say were like your favorites of the season? Yes. Uh, you want me to say it right now? Yeah, yeah, because we're going to jump into that right now. Let's okay. do that. The The first one that I like, I probably put number one, is probably Bad Traveling. That's with the crewmates okay. and the, the crustacean. Yeah. Yep. I was just like, whoa, yeah, yeah. what am I watching? That was my... That was my <laughs> yeah. That was my favorite, too. Nice, <laughs> By the nice. end, I was like, holy crap. <laughs> that was a good one, yeah. Um, all right, so what else? But I also, uh, also like the actually the first episode of Three Robots. I thought it was just funny yep. how they had a how they viewed the world. Like these humans, like they could have 
fixed everything. They had all the money. Well, and it's funny you say leave. that because in Volume 1, <clears throat> that was the first episode of Volume 1. This is a sequel episode of an episode oh, from Volume 1. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, so it's I've, I, I, it's yeah. funny that you say that. But, yeah, it's yeah, I love those robots too. <laughs> yeah, As of right now, that's the only one to carry over. Yep, and, oh, it's the first okay. sequel episode. Because yeah. I heard there were like yeah. anthologies. I'm just like, all right, so I don't need to see season one or yeah. two. They're all separate stories. So yeah, that's exactly. The only yeah, one. for the most part, even it, yeah, you don't even really need to see the first one to like. This doesn't exactly 100 percent come after the yeah. the first one. This could have been before, for all we know. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Um, yeah. yeah. So, but it is a return even of a, those characters. Yeah, even as a return of those characters, like Dan was saying, like. This is it's still its own enclosed story that you can yeah. completely understand without watching the first one. It's so. standalone okay, okay. all the way. Yeah. 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 Uh, Disco, what is your second one? Uh, my second one uh, was uh, I like in the vaulted halls, yeah. the tombed one. The, yeah, yeah. The second to last, that, that, that one with Cthulhu. <laughs> yeah, that was <laughs> At great. At the end, yeah. when he was just like, "Release me, yeah. release me," I was like really shook in there. I was like, "I want to keep seeing this." Like, Yo, that one was more. a badass. Yeah, yeah, it was um, crazy. That one was wild, and I really liked the little crawling creatures. They're like yeah. little robotic, little I don't even know, like yeah, they were robots. almost like uh, <clears throat> they were like tech spiders almost. Um, yeah, yeah, it was interesting. It was, um, Very cool. Do you have any others, Henry? Uh, and the other one that I like is the swarm because I'm just like, yep, that's just human yeah. arrogance. Like they they thinking they control everything. Yeah. Like let's just enslave this and make it our own. It's like, and then the swarm is like, nope, we dealt with people like you before. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is our response. <laughs> Oh uh, yeah, we're gonna get into that one into like some more detail in a second. But Disco, what's your last one? That that was my next one. Okay, too. nice. I yeah, really yeah. like Swarm. That was, that was right. a wild one. I want to guess Dan's <clears throat> favorite episode. I want all of you to take a guess. Yes, I, we should all take a guess. Uh, I think it was the uh, the zombie one, the zombie apocalypse one, the oh, mini zombie. The apocalypse little mini one. people. Yeah, Night of the, Night mini, of the mini Living dead. dead. I think it is. Yes. Uh, wait one second. Let me find the name of the episode. I have it here. My, Night of the Mini Dead. My girlfriend really liked that Night of that the Mini one. Dead, yeah. yeah. She was like, I'm going to show this to my class. And then I was like, remembered, like, didn't it start off with like hardcore fucking Just straight and <laughs> <in the laughs> like, Maybe you should hold back on that. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah that was, f- that, that one was like, I, I, dude, all of them were my favorites. I just loved all these yeah. fucking <laughs> episodes. But Night of the Mini Dead is, I think, you, the one you liked the most, Dan. Yeah. Uh, Next guess. Oh man. Uh man, I don't know. Henry, why don't you take a Ma- shot Mason's at Mason's rats. Mason's rats. Okay, that's an interesting guess. With the automated robots like going to war with the rats. Yeah, with the rats, yeah. 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 Okay. All right, Disco. <laughs> I'm going to take a Hail Mary and say Jabiro. <laughs> yeah, all right. Jabaro? Okay. Jabaro or whatever. Jabaro, that's the yeah. last one, correct? Yeah, that's yeah. takes place nine, yeah. in the jungles of Puerto Rico. Just so you know, um, <laughs> yep. huh. yeah. So all three of you are wrong. It is the swarm. Um, swarm by oh, far nice. was to me the best. Uh, it was episode. a really good episode. Um, yeah. That was the one where when it ended, I was upset. I was like, no, 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 no. You're like, I, I, I want more. more. I need yes. more. <laughs> <laughs> that, I felt like that with all of them, honestly. Except, well, yeah. Night of the Mini Dead was kind of just like it was over. The story was over, but yeah. Um, but yeah, no, that was one of the ones that left you like on a Even cliffhanger. Even Mason's rats, um, the one yeah. where he just ended up getting chill with the rats. You yeah, because I was just like, that? I want to see how they, how they evolve more. Is he gonna have like his own like he's gonna have uh, like uh, diplomacy with army. these rats when they start taking over? <laughs> it's gonna be funny. Yeah, um, no, that that was definitely the one for me. All the other ones, they're I mean, they're not bad. It's Love Death the Robots doesn't make anything bad in my opinion. Yeah, um, I still no. They're if anything, they're mid at like their worst. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Probably my favorite overall in all three seasons is still. It's it goes back and forth. It's a the tie yogurt. between when the yogurt took over, yeah. and um, Zima Blue. Those are Zima those Blue. are. Oh yes, yes, I remember with, Zima with the Blue. Robot, yeah. yeah, so that was great. Um, so those are still like my favorite. Swarm is almost there, mm-hmm. not quite, but um, yeah. So for me, I'm like so far like like if I had to choose this top three, it'd be like Jabaro. Uh, swarm, um, and uh, and then like in vaulted halls entombed, um, mm-hmm. and when I saw the trailer for this thing, 
uh, they show you that little quick scene of Jabara where she kind of comes out of the water and then she starts doing like that weird dance. Mm -hmm. And that that caught my eye right away. I was like, this is really weird. I'm very interested. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I actually want to talk about this episode a little bit because this episode had um, like a lot of a lot of themes. And it's also a returning director. Uh, from a season Ooh. one episode, yep. uh, the um, the witness, uh, and I don't know That's if you guys remember episode. that one. The witness is really. It was episode. a great episode, and I had because I was like I don't remember this episode, so I had to go back and watch it a little bit of again, and I remembered it, and it was like a weird time fuck thing um, where he like murdered this girl, and then like he sees her across the room, he's like, wait, I just killed you, and then he follows her, and then it almost like happens again. Um, or in a different way, but yeah, they go back and forth. They're stuck in a time loop where it's this guy and this yeah. girl who are going back and forth trying to kill each other. Yeah. Um, so it's interesting. But when I was watching it again, same animation style, same vibrant colors, same weird camera angles as uh, as Jibaro. And uh, I, I was like, I really like I really enjoyed the language. Um, because also in this one, there's a lot of, there's a lot of action. There's a lot of, uh, music and expression through what's happening. And like the, the, the score, uh, without a lot of words happening because Jabara was, there was no words said. Uh, and then it was just nothing but like the music that was like setting the pace and the tone for like the, the episode. But Jabaro was like a conquistadors almost, right? Like they yeah, looked they like they were Spaniards. Um, That's supposed to be when the conquistadors and, went to the island of Borinquen and converted into Puerto Rico. Nice. Okay. Yeah. And then you have a siren, and that's who who that woman is. She's a siren, and then uh, she starts like using her song to like, and and it was it was really fucking funny because she was like doing the song and dancing. And then, like, when everybody went crazy and started running towards her and killing each other, they were also dancing. Like, some of them would do, like, little, um, little like, ballet spins and, like, mm. do all that shit. And I was like, oh, this is, this is really weird but really cool. Like, I'm, I'm like, really loving this. And then, like, I like have... the way she looked dancing, too. Like, uh-huh. her fluidity and just the way, like, her whole body was just, like, yeah. jeweled up. It was such a, an experience. And like, I think they did that by, like... Watch. Having Surreal. like a like motion capture, someone actually doing those dance <clears throat> yeah, moves to get so. like the fluidity, um, but no, it was beautiful. It was like such a beautiful like short, and then like you have the you have the guy that was deaf who didn't affect him, and then she was like very curious. She was like, "Why is this the one not like affected by my song?" She kind of grabs her throat. She's like, "Am I like did I lose my power?" And then <laughs> she kind of goes. Uh, when he like um, when he's sleeping, she kind of goes and like looks at him, and she sleeps next to him, and he wakes up, and like they have like this moment, and then she like runs away, but then he notices when he grabbed her and she, and he got hurt that it was all gold, and uh, he goes after her, and then they have like this moment in the water where they're dancing, and then he kind of just like knocks her out, and then just starts ripping all like the golden jewels off of her, and it's very like symbolizing like conquerors going in and like raping and pillaging like whether it's people or the land of its resources and then kind of just like when they're done they just throw it away like he threw her in the water and he's like all right mm-hmm. i got what i needed and now i'm a dip um it looked like it hurt too it, looked, it just might have like feathers or something it was like just, almost like, like scales like, yeah, yeah, yeah it was almost like scales yeah scales even her tongue well, was like scales. it was yep. yeah <laughs> yeah, it was red, right? Yeah, I remember. Yeah. There's um, that. She even wore the mask thing. Um, yeah. Which, you know, he rips that off of her. And, um, yeah, so he throws her back in the water, and then she, she, her body gets carried to where her home is in that lake. And then just a lot of blood just starts coming out of nowhere, and then, like, it starts going everywhere in the water. And then he's stopping there, and he's he's drinking at a river, and then he ends up drinking blood. And when he drinks that blood, his hearing comes back. And then it's kind of like, um, and then he's like, he doesn't know what the fuck's happening because he's obviously been deaf since he was born. And then he realizes he got his hearing back. 
and then when he goes back to the thing and she she wakes up and then she's like what happened to me um she notices all her like her body's like gone like all the jewelry which is like i guess a part of her physically um she's just like she she's in so much pain and you see that in her crying and wailing and then she finally starts doing the song again and and then boom she catches him and he goes and when he sinks to the bottom you see the thousands dead mm-hmm. and it, it ends and i was like whoa i was like, that it was just like it was one of the most amazing episodes they had it was it was very beautiful um mm-hmm. shout out to the director man he was amazing because he did the same amazing job with the vibrant colors and uh, and again the weird camera angles when he was running through the forest and like the breathing and like the the, the sounds uh stuff like that was happening too and in, in the witness when she was running around trying to get away from him and stuff like that um the director's name is alberto mielgo yep um mm. so yeah i yeah that it was it would this one was really it was a really strong one for me along with the swarm and then the tuned one because the tuned one was like Cthulhu, like when I saw the monsters and the tentacles, and it almost had like. <laughs> as wings soon as I saw it, I was and... like, "Oh man, we, we're getting into Lovecraft now." Like this is yeah, you know, <laughs> Lovecraft country. Yeah, I'm God, I missed that Super show. Super cool. No, 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 I, I hated cool. that show. Just Lovecraft in general. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, because he's, uh, he's the author. But Lovecraft country was really good. Um, speaking of HBO shows, have you watched Tokyo Vice? I've seen it. Never heard. Of it. No, I'm talking to Dan. Never heard. Of it. Oh, you should check it out. I think you'd really enjoy that show. It's um, it's an HBO it's, show. Uh, just hear me out for a second. <laughs> it's it's investigative reporting happening mm. in in like the '90s Japan with like yakuza. Uh, mm. Very story heavy. It's very interesting. Um, I don't know. I think you. I, I, I could it. give it a I try, know. but I don't. I mm-hmm. don't know. It's about. It's a cop okay. show. I don't like cop shows. It's not a cop show. I said investigative reporting, not a cop show. Very yeah. different. Also, like how the the one. All those Law and Order shows that are about not Law and Order, but they're about like ambulance people and fire departments are also cop shows to me. So it's like okay, <laughs> it's okay. Well, thing. this one's different, um, but I, I recommend you check it out. I think you'd, you'd I'll enjoy it. I'll try it's it. it's uh whatever. Let's get back to Love, Death, and Robots. Um, any any specific episodes you guys want to discuss? <clears throat> I want to bring up Bad Traveler. Uh, okay, the yes. one with the 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 pod thing the thanapod giant crustacean uh, it was like a giant stink bug in there and just going crazy (laughs) where and uh but at the end i was like really torn about the commander the captain guy like surviving i was like is he a good guy or a bad guy i don't know because his whole crew died but then at the then again like he did lure the thanapod to like the other well, island remember to, what to he end, did right like burned it yeah so <laughs> what he what he did was like he's like let's take a vote on this right because so the pod got stuck in the bottom of the ship not stuck but it, it stayed at the bottom of the ship and it was like he went down because they were drawing short sauce to go down to see what happened he goes out he makes a deal with this thing because it was speaking through like one of the humans right and it was like take me to this island and um he 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 ends up saying like, "Okay, I'll, well, but you can't eat me, right? Because if you don't eat me, I can't get you there." Mm-hmm. Um, he goes back. He tells the crew what happened, and they're like, "This island is populated." And he's like, "It got a taste of our meat, and it likes it, so it wants to go there to start killing people." Like so, so he he put it up to a vote for the crew. He's like, "What do you think we should do? Should we take it there, or should we take it to this other island that's deserted?" Um, you find out later on in, in in the end that everybody voted to just take it to the island so they can save themselves. So what? And and he was the only one who had morals because he was like, I can't let this shit happen, right? He got to the gun first, and then he was in control after that. And he was very cunning. Um, he was able to outsmart all of them, kill them one by one, and feed it to the thing so he can finally actually kill the crustacean before it gets to the island and its babies because like those babies are going to grow and have more babies and like they're just going to keep eating people right mm-hmm. there are so, hundreds of them too in yeah that one so he's ship. like he's like i have to stop this like these pieces of shits care more about themselves than all the innocent people on that island he's like i'm not going to go down that way mm-hmm. um so he ends up uh so the ship happens to be a ship that hunted like specific type of shark that had a that its fat gets turned into like oil for like burning um so they had barrels of it on on the bottom where the crustacean is he ends up like um destroying some of the barrels setting it on fire and like hauling ass off the boat so 
I think he was the good guy. I mean, he Definitely. obviously he had to do what he had to do to save a lot of innocent lives by killing all the pieces of shit. But hey. surrounded by shitty people. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, he was definitely one of the good guys. Um, um what's it called? Uh it was directed by David Fincher, who if anybody's familiar Yes, it was his first animated one, right? Yeah. And uh this yeah. guy directed Fight Club, Panic Room, Zodiac, The Curious Case of Benjamin Button, Social Network, Girl with a Dragon Tattoo, Gone Girl, a bunch of other movies that like huh. are, are very We're well badass, renowned. Yeah. And yes. the voice of the navigator was Troy Baker, who's this amazing voice actor. You guys would know him as Joel from The Last of Us. Nice. Oh, nice. So it's nice, like nice. they they had a good uh good combination yeah. there. And the story was really cool too. Like it was mm-hmm. a good story. Um again, another great episode. I like how like the Thanapod would like use a dead body to talk to yeah. you and it's like mm-hmm. it looks all gruesome and just yeah. like de- decompose. Yeah. That's and always cool whenever talking. they do that in anything. Yeah. Like they do it in a the other episode Swarm. They yeah. do it in um Mass Effect, the yeah. game. That like, episode it's, it's always Swarm a cool where... effect. Where she was going into the brain, it reminded me of Starship Troopers, mm. where the thing was just sucking people's brains out. Yeah, that yeah, yeah. Because uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was funny because it was a hive too, right, of the bugs, yeah. Yeah, and that yeah. was the queen sucking the bugs. But um, I, let's talk about Swarm because it was like uh, uh, the four of us agreed it was like, one of our favorites. Um, wow. Like that was such an amazing fucking concept. And the way they built it up, I was like, God damn, yo, can we have a show just about this? Mm-hmm. Like, can we just, like, get another couple episodes about this? So the whole premise of the show is, like, the, there's a human on this alien ship that they take them to this huge asteroid where the swarm, uh, they, that's what they call it, a swarm, right? Yeah. And it's just mm-hmm. a bunch of different species uh, living in symbiosis. Um and they're they're helping each other out. There some make the food, some are the soldiers, but it's all not the same species. So every time a new species gets in, uh, introduced, whether it, as long as it's not hostile, it could just like live along with it, and eventually it just becomes part of the the swarm. And when they do become hostile, the swarm has ways of dealing with it, which is what happened with the humans. Right? There was already a doctor living in there, and then this new doctor, Doctor um, Afriel. Uh, uh, Voiced by there. Rosario Dawson, the woman. The woman, I forgot what oh, her okay. name was. Yeah. Uh, the man was named Afriel. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, I thought she that's, was. Yeah. I think she was Doctor Rondi. Maybe uh, I'll find it if you. Yeah, and uh, she was already. Lena Marini. Sorry. Okay, and then yeah, he, the other guy was Afriel. Um, so he was there. He was studying. He wanted to get a um, an egg, a queen egg. So they can just grow their own, like, queen. Because, like, the doctor was like, this is not an in- a sentient swarm, right? It's just, like, almost like ants. Uh, they're just doing what they're doing off of pheromones that can control them. And uh, and that's what they thought. And then at the end, we realized they, they it does have an intelligence, right? Which said it grew in eight weeks or something like that, mm-hmm. or 12 weeks. Mm-hmm. She's like, I'm 12 weeks old, and I and she was like, the swarm did this because you guys were a threat, and we needed to do this. And she was like, the last time this happened, look at look at the species now, it's eating. Yeah, your I love when they broke that down, and then they're just oh, like, yeah. even though I might be like a newborn, I have the retained memories of the previous like, well, and like they're going. She's down like, I have thing. millions. Yeah, she's yeah. like, I have millions of years of information, yeah. but I'm only 12 weeks old, right? Because yeah, I have like, the retained information of all these different species. Um, just badass. This reminds me of the episode. Do you remember the episode where the the guys, um, that spaceship crew that was um, doing like uh, travel, but then they traveled through something that fucked up their ship, and like this giant alien creature was like. Yep. This reminded me of that because like yeah. the creature was like sympathetic to their pain and stuff like that, but it was also controlling their minds and. It tried well, to one make them mind. live like a peaceful. Try to give him like this whole peaceful life that he wish he had had or whatever. Yeah, and with, like, like a, a woman death and everything. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I was like, "Wow, that's amazing!" Like that, and then this was another thing where the whole intelligence was just like a giant brain, um, and it hooked up to the lady. She was like, "Listen, you have a choice, right? I, you can either remain alive, like and conscious, and I can study you, because humanity eventually might come for me." And when I study you, I will beat them. Mm-hmm. And then, or she's like, you can become like this chick that I have. Um, and he's like, I accept your challenge, right? And mm-hmm. that's where Henry was saying, like, the human arrogance yeah. um, the hubris. comes in. But 
Yeah, yeah. Um, which again, I thought it was just like an amazing. It would it would be interesting to see the game of chess that like that like he and like humanity would try to play with this thing and see if if they do get to do it. Uh, yeah, that's but, yeah, something I would I, like I, to see more of. I hope that they come back to it. I don't know if they will. But, it's an amazing uh, yeah. fucking concept, man. So. It's just uh, yeah. the guy who directed this was Tim Miller. He directed the first Deadpool movie. Nice. But cool, the cool, swarm cool. also said like you you pro- you could either be enslaved by us or you'll just die on your own cuz judging from your trajectory you'll just kill yourself <laughs> off. Yeah, the human the human race will kill itself. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like I've seen it happen many <laughs> times. You're, you're on your way yep. to kill yourself. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I was like, "Oh shit." Yeah. yeah. That was that was like one of the well, best twists. That's so that's good. that's another funny thing cuz so let's get back to the three robots, right? Because that's what literally those three robots is about. It's it's showing you <laughs> the human arrogance and all our downfalls in a funny way, right? And then it, they were going through the different uh, tiers of like uh, human thinking, where you have like the super um, also like different gun like classes, and money stuff, situation yeah. too. Yeah, yeah, and it's like you have like the gun guys and like the doomsday preppers and. And they're like they they think they're the ones who are gonna survive, but they ended up just fucking killing each other and stabbing mm-hmm. each other in the back to get like the f- supplies. Mm-hmm. And then you have like the tech geniuses who thought we're like okay, we'll just have like all the solution comes from tech, and they have no um, practical abilities. And then mm-hmm. like the AI ends up turning on them, and just like that AI <laughs> conversation yeah. was fucking hilarious. They're She's like, like, this is our uh, ancestors. They started the robot revolution. <laughs> yeah. The robot oppression. <laughs> And then I, I, I thought, like, I thought it was hilarious that the ships that they were that showing the ships that were going to Mons were mm-hmm. the same design as Elon Musk's ship. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And then, like, and then, like, at the end, when the cat was like, what do you think? Is this going to be Elon Musk? I was just like, <laughs> I was like, oh, that's fucking great. Yeah. Um, you'll get the cat reference the cat when you survive. watch the you'll get the cat reference when you watch the first season. Under. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> but yeah, okay, so okay. so that 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 those like uh it's sh- is is just like hey you guys think you're so smart and like these writers are like hey this these are the downfalls of like each fucking one of these like class systems of like whether you're a doomsday prepper or like a tech guy or like and they're like we have the tech now and we have like the resources now to like kind of avert ourselves from like uh global like uh, disaster <laughs> Yeah, from like whether it's like uh, warming or like different like um, like the soil being overused to the point of we can't even grow food anymore. Like there's a lot of shit going on, and like we have the ability to, to like kind of reverse it, but nobody's taking action because obviously everybody thinks in the short term and just wants to make the most money they possibly can. Not only but, that, but like hey, they said, it's easier to do this than just to go to another planet. Yeah, exactly. Well, how are you gonna fucking terraform a whole planet? It's it's we we're not even close. Like you know how how like advanced on the Kardashev scale do you need to be to fucking do that? Like we don't even know how to harness the power of our own sun yet. Right. Uh, to be able or uh, no, l- let me rephrase that. We don't even know how to harness the power of our own planet to a level where we don't need fossil fuels anymore. And and they're like, oh no, it's cool. We'll just go to Mars. Like, yeah. like, fuck out of here with your nonsense. <laughs> Don't worry about um, it, Aslan, because our planet is flat, so if it gets too hot, we just go onto the other side. We'll be fine. Oh, that makes sense. 100% correct. <laughs> True. Right. What? I, like, why the fuck are we even arguing about <laughs> yeah, this? Exactly. Like, we got it. We, we, we have ready. a whole we're other ready. half on, like, the yeah. underside. We just flip exactly. it over. Just put so rockets just, on it. Do and we just get know, all the humans over. to lean on the one side so it can flip? Yeah, and then it just it, it <laughs> it tips. That's exactly how it works. It just tips over. <laughs> And then we it's just like stay the cold on... side of the pillow. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's exactly how it is. Oh my god! Um, uh, any other honorable mentions? Uh, uh, should we talk a little bit more about the the Cthulhu episode? And Vault of Tombs. Yeah, sure. Um, um, I uh, one thing I did like about that is um, as soon as I saw it, I was just like, "Hey, that's." And I'm going to butcher his name like I always do. Joe Manganiello. Oh, Joe yeah. Mag... Um, yeah. Joe Manganiello. Joe DiMaggio. It was him. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever. Some Italian dude. Yeah, um, the guy who's in everything. Um, yeah. I, and I was just like... At first, the CG was like... I was like, oh, man, that looks really good. It looks like him. And then as it progressed, I was like, yeah, it's not that great. But um, like Danny, you said earlier, I really did enjoy the um, the little robotic, sentient, like, organic spiders. Like, I don't even know what the hell to call them. Like... Yeah, I don't know if they're yeah. sentient, but like the organic <laughs> spiders. Cool. 
uh, and it was uh, just the way that they were just eating them apart. And then you see the one guy when he kind of like survived, and he's just like mm-hmm. breaking down, and his organs yeah. fall out of him, <laughs> oh, and everything. Yeah. I was like, oh god. And, and it was just like a cliff. Like it no. was interesting that it was just like, oh, this is a defense system, and you're like, what the f- what defense for what? Yeah. Well, that's the thing. Once I saw them go through the tunnel and they didn't follow them, I was like, oh, no. (laughs) There's there's something worse. Exactly. And then you see, like, the the statues of, like, almost like these people praying. With, like, like, the four arms. Yeah. Yeah, and it's almost like... um, Like, they're they're casting a spell to keep this creature inside and, like, Mm -hmm. they have all this set up and, like, the chains and, like, the pillars. Whenever it touches it, the runes uh, activate. Um, shit, I would like to see that as a video game. Let's fucking go. Um, For real. That'd be interesting. <laughs> pretty badass concept there. Yeah. Um, speaking of video games, uh, Henry, maybe you could help me because the, what was the one called with the, with the giant crab? Uh, Dragon anyway, Traveler? yeah, the bad traveling. The, <laughs> <laughs> what, which game is it that has like the old, like, um, kind of like steampunk thing? It's, it's like, um. Oh man, I can't. I can't. It's like an old. Fuck, I don't even know how to begin to describe it. I've played the game. I just don't like it. It's kind of like a steampunk, like uh, set era thing. It's a very popular video game. There's like three of them. Um, There's three of them. Fuck. All right, I'm gonna find it. You'll remember. But there's one more thing I want to talk about. (laughs) The very, the very pulse of the machine, right? Uh, The 2001: A Space Odyssey kind of episode. Dishonored. Go ahead. That's um, what I was thinking of. Dishonored. Okay. I feel like and, it fits uh, in that world. <laughs> so the episode with the astronauts that crashed on one of the moons of Jupiter, and then she was kind of like walking through, like her partner died, and she took her to get the oxygen. She's like, she has to go 40 kilometers. And she's like, she's taking drugs, so she starts like hallucinating and almost hearing the planet. And the planet's telling her that it's a machine. Um and to like she's like hey you're about you're you're about to die uh join me and i will keep your consciousness alive your body will die but i will keep your consciousness alive and um it was a very interesting story it was very like um uh it was very 2001 a space odyssey type vibe to it like almost like of a human evolution joining machinery mm-hmm. um and then and then when they zoomed out and you see jupiter and you see the eye of jupiter looking at the planet uh that was like it was very interesting uh but yeah no again another weird like very trippy episode with the colors and like the the voices she was hearing it it started telling it poetry uh Mm -hmm. uh, and i don't know it was it was a very um it was a very psychedelic episode but Mm -hmm. it was it was another really fucking good one in the end she picked the green uh Option in Mass Effect Three. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she did, just like me. Um, and last thing, I just want to s- kill Team Kill with the with the fucking bear. That shit was hilarious Seth when that Green's guy was that dying. One, yeah. uh, that was probably that was probably <laughs> yeah. the guy. He was like he was like tell 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 my wife that's Seth Green. Yeah, <laughs> I fucked her sister. <laughs> I was just like, dude, I was fucking dying. That was such a funny episode. Yeah. Um, I don't know, man. I I really love this volume. I hope Netflix doesn't do what Netflix does and cancel the show after three volumes or three seasons. It's all right, guys. I like this one. It's going to last. I I hope so. (laughs) I hope so. But this made me want to go back and watch season one because I kind of forgot all the episodes from season one. So I kind of need a refresher. Um, But I think I I I do that regularly. I go back and watch the old ones uh, on a regular every once in a while. Yeah, uh, I think I'm uh, I'm gonna have to do that. And there was I remember an episode from season uh, season two that I really enjoyed, the one with the the guy who can regenerate. Um, that was on another planet. Uh, he was like the white, white something. Yeah, the white guy, and they yep. were just after his balls. Well, yeah, um, like he's out in the desert and stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, they were just after her. They were like, "We need those nuts. We got to get that regeneration <laughs> power." You gotta but... watch these under. <laughs> Snow in the yeah, dude. What would you recommend? Yeah. Season two and end one, or just go one two? Uh, yeah, just do one two. One two, just watch them all. Yeah, yeah. just go in order. Like yeah. it doesn't really matter. Because you, yeah, you guys say but... like number two, it doesn't live up to the hype. So I, I want to watch something. No, I, well, I think like season one was so strong, and then like season two came out, and I think they kind of pulled back a little bit with like the because like you see how crazy these episodes are in this season, mm-hmm. and how like thought provoking they are. There weren't that many of them in season two. Um, 
And in season two, it felt more like uh, it was just like all Playful. the shit that humanity does that like will fuck it over, like kill itself. And then. like episode this... one of season two was a cool. It was the lady with the automatic uh, robot, yeah. like that was yeah. like trying to kill the world. <laughs> like yeah. it's like they had stuff like that. Was season one had the yogurt, right? Yes, I. Oh my okay. god, the yogurt's so good though. Yeah, you got to watch the yogurt, Henry. <laughs> but yeah, you I definitely do. Like it. a yogurt um, conquers the world. I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's literally it. Like, you yeah. need to see it. Uh, uh, Disco, you're on mute again. You're muted again. Yep. <laughs> well, why don't you fix <laughs> that and we're going to jump the hand, in. Just like, damn it. Just the All defeat. Right. So while he fixes that, we can jump into uh, final thoughts about um, this before we go into news. Um, or should we say final thoughts? Today? Well, I want to hear Disco's final thoughts because he might leave earlier. Yeah. So um, let's start with final thoughts about this. Uh, and then we're going to jump into some news i could um, uh i could start off if you want um go for it so uh i've said on this podcast numerous times how i love anthology series um and i feel mm-hmm. like that's kind of what this is this is like um back in the day you had twilight zone and then you moved to horror with like tales from the crypt and stuff like that i feel like this is this era's anthology series where it's just yeah. like you get this where it's like these short little snippets um, these cool stories, and it's just so accessible because of the length. And then you see other people mm-hmm. like Disney doing the same thing with Star Wars. And it's just like they—they they, clearly they got that from this. That's where they got—they got yeah. their idea from. So it's—it's it's cool to see um, that. Um, I'd like to see more anthology things like that, especially these little. If you have like twenty minutes to kill, you don't have to worry about following an overall story and learn new characters. Just go in there, watch an episode. It's—it's it's perfect. It's perfect for that. It is. Um, Henry. Um, I really like these short episodes. Like, I hope like other uh, TV series, like you know, like don't fill it in with nonsense. Like, twenty-four length mm-hmm. episodes. Like, it doesn't need to be long. Like, this show proves that. Like, you can just make it twelve minutes, twenty minutes. Like, get to the point. You know, like you don't need to fill it up with like all this cut the stuff. fat. Yeah, you know, it's just mm-hmm. like. If a story takes 12 episodes, just make it 12. Don't only like, oh, man, now we need to add 12 more nonsense episodes. Yeah. Like, yeah. Well, that's that's the TV um But I'm kind of hoping the like, they, they get like, a hint yeah. from this. Like, oh, I don't think see? the TV formula is going to change anytime nah. soon. But, They're trying to make that money. Uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. They need that <sighs> Sometimes ad. Sometimes they, they can't milk they it. They do know? that. <laughs> yeah, they do that for the ad space, right? Because they're just yeah. selling ads in all these episodes. So the more episodes, the more ads you have. But mm. with streaming services, they're just like, we're going to tell the story in like, uh, w- at least with HBO, like eight to ten episodes max, right? right. That's that's right. what they exactly. That's do, all you so. need. That's all you need. So yeah, exactly. I, I, I'm it's liking true, the but... series, and I hope uh, there's a season four and, and beyond. Also, with with less episodes, you need more content to keep churning out for people mm-hmm. to come back to. But if you have a thing that takes 24 weeks. Uh, then you have way more to- more time to like, you, you know, you don't have to put up and keep putting new ideas and new content out there. You can just drag out this shit for like forever. But that's besides the point. Disco, we're doing uh, some final thoughts about this uh, the this the series before we jump into news. So, what are your final thoughts about this? Uh, final thoughts. <clears throat> I hope that since this third. Well, I hope this season three did well. I, I thought it should do well. It's got a lot of interesting content, so I'm hoping that it gets traction enough for Netflix to give it that next season. And uh, hopefully, Netflix doesn't do what it does and and just fucking cancel shit. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm I'm right there with you. That's that's my same sentiment. Like, don't fucking cancel this Netflix. You you already canceled a lot of good shows. You you have a lot of shows ending, and um where you're going to get your new content from like so um yeah you need more scripted content because like i mean i people still watch these fucking reality tv shows but whatever fuck it um before we jump into news i just want to let everybody know to go check out the Los wise guys website go check out our youtube channel because it's popping we are throwing out new videos every week we are throwing out clips on our social medias go check those out too and um yeah we're trying to be out here uh go support us subscribe watch our videos like them engage throw in some comments every once in a while Uh, it helps us out with the algorithm so that said let's jump into some news um disco you want to go first with your news 
Uh, sure. Uh, start off with uh, Ray Liotta passed away. Um, he, the article I read said he passed away in his sleep in DR. Mm-hmm. So, uh, man had a legendary, legendary career. Yeah. I I was actually shook on this one. I was like, no, damn. And I felt I felt a little sign there, and I was just like. He's like in all the classic mob movies. Mm-hmm. He plays such a good like gangster type, yeah. you know. Even in his older years, he's just so good at it. Yeah. Still, like <laughs> he like he really had that niche down. And and he's on a bunch of other movies, yeah. not gangster. Like it, he's a it was just a well rounded actor like altogether. Yeah. And the so, voice of Tommy great, Versetti great loss. in uh, Grand Theft Auto Vice City, what I consider yeah. the best best Grand Theft Auto. Like he he owned he was the first uh, protagonist to have a voice in GTA. Like, dude's amazing. One hundred percent. Yep. I uh, next up, uh, as everyone might have heard, there was a school shooting in Texas, Uvalde School. Uh, an article I read it said nineteen children dead and two adults. This is, of course, a tremendous tragedy, and uh, there's a lot to be said about this, and I don't think we're going to tackle it all, but it is it is news and it is current, and there's a lot of change that has to be done in America and uh, gun control, and I think further than gun control, I think you need to tackle the root. You need to fix these broken people from a broken community and societies. I uh, you know I think there's a lot to be done, and uh, we're still focused on just... <laughs> controlling women and their bodies and abortions it's like who knows if any change is even going to happen well they're trying to um, force them to have the kids and yet they fail to protect the kids from things yeah, like this yeah. so it's it's so true and uh and and it's, it's uh, and and like the the programs like you said that to help these kids like texas had just cut funding 211 million dollars funding from these types of programs like to to help these like troubled kids or whatever from like schools and it's just like yeah there's there's a lot going on with our society that needs to be worked on um yeah so much yeah we're Um, we're definitely going to talk about this at some point just there's a lot to get into and a lot to break down yeah definitely definitely um next up uh kevin spacey is charged with sexual assault again uh, in the uk Yeah, against three men apparently. Did he well, call yeah, bald? the um, first one was. A... <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so I, that's man. I used to respect Kevin Spacey, man, but uh, he can never can never get down with sexual assault, especially you know, just any any time. You know, it's never never a good look. Well, apparently, and, uh, when he had it here, when he got canceled, he, it was at, at the time. I think it was a minor, or not a, not. Oh wow! Yeah. Or I, I don't know if it was like a hundred percent minor, but it, well, I mean technically, yes, by law it was a minor, but like I think like a sixteen eighty five percent minor, <laughs> sixteen seventeen year old, um, which by law yes is a minor. He's not an adult yet, so. But again, it was a it was a it was a it was a boy. So I mean, and then he tried to be like, yeah, I'm gay, to try to like thinking like people yeah, like, would be like, like oh like, no, bro, it's still okay, wrong man. like <laughs> yeah no it's just like what the <laughs> fuck like, nobody gives a fuck if you're gay still can't do that shit <laughs> he's like he thought the gay community would come out of save yeah. lgbq twitter he's like nope you're still a scumbag yeah. <laughs> um so can we basically get your shit together i don't know i don't even know what to say to that <clears throat> uh what else some TV show news. Uh, Jude Law joins the Star Wars Skeleton Crew, uh, directed by John Watts. Uh, I'm looking forward to that. I, I'm going to eat up whatever Star uh, Star Wars throws at us, even if it sucks or not. I, I'm going to watch it. So, uh, But, you know, hopefully hopefully this is pretty good. Uh, I like Jude Law. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's supposed to be I'm about... I'm a fan of Jude Law. Yeah, it's supposed to be about kids was... trying to make their way home in the Star Wars world or something like that. Um, it's not a kid show, though. Mm. So that's that's what I got from oh. reading about it. Okay. Pretty cool, pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Hopefully they don't mess that up. Um, next up, Horizon Zero Dawn is getting their own show uh, on Netflix mm-hmm. from Sony. Yeah, it's in the works. 
Yeah, yeah. So that should be pretty interesting. Uh, you guys had some movies to throw on to? What shows? Well, there's going to be the Horizon Zero Dawn show, a God of War show, and a Gran Turismo. Um, yeah. I think so the God well. of God of War is happening oh, wow. over at Prime Video. Uh, Gran Turismo, not sure yet. Maybe yeah. also at Netflix? Uh, I don't know if but, they said yeah. where, but I know that they said it is in the works. Mm-hmm. Um, but, uh, yeah, I'm going to stand by my sentiment. We don't need movies or shows for any of these. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I don't see myself getting a PS4 anytime soon, so, I mean, I'm looking forward to it. At least I get a taste of that story, whether they butcher it or not. <laughs> I'm always down for good things I mean, to watch. PC, man. You I, play I these just, games on PC. <laughs> I just beat... Um, PC? Yeah. yeah. I just I'm going to do Horizon. everything to get you down to watch these shows. Go ahead, us. <laughs> <laughs> I just beat Horizon uh, Zero Dawn. Uh, so oh, nice. I, I got to see the full story. Um, it is an interesting story. Definitely 100% interesting story. I just think they, they could have done way more with the dialogue. Um, just like... I don't know. It was like the dialogue wasn't interesting. I I skipped it all the time after I realized like it wasn't important. The only dialogue I saw was like the cutscenes, so I can find out what the story happens. But when people were talking, I was like, I don't give a fuck. Let's go. Let's, this is a waste of my time. Um, but yeah, uh, the story's definitely there, and it's definitely uh, it was definitely interesting. But you know, it's uh. It it might do better in a, in a show format, but let's see what Netflix does. So, uh, yeah. Henry, what do you think? So, were you kind of like tired towards the end of the, like? Do you think that's because you had to play through it? Do you think you'd have enjoyed it more if it was more of just like a cinematic? No, I no, I enjoyed the game very much. Uh, okay. For what it was, I enjoyed the game. Uh, it's just like I've been spoiled because I played I played these things way out of order. So, like, I played, uh, like, Mass Effect. I played, uh, uh, what's, it, what's it called? Um, the, fuck? the Last of Us. Like, these really story-heavy games that were done super well. Mass Effect, you, like, your decisions affect your story greatly. They matter. And, like, yeah. I feel like th- this could have done that, like, with the way you found out your information, like the alliances you made and all these things, but it's just it it fell it fell short of that and I think the story was great enough to do that. Um but yeah, so I so I got spoiled because I played these like really amazing games first and then I got to this, which is like a good game but well, everyone else did like, too. Like that in the order the Horizon came out after those games. So it's like oh okay yeah so yeah. it's like you're not the only one that's on that's all of us no, um, Horizon <laughs> okay I didn't know so, you know because I'm like huh Horizon no Last of Us Last of Us was out be- Horizon Zero Dawn's a PS4 oh. game Horizon's uh, oh, Last of yeah, Us is yeah, PS3 no, yeah you're right you're right yeah but um it's especially the character of Aloy she's mm-hmm. even though she's a cool character to control and everything she has absolutely no personality she's no, no. just person running around with Bo like. Mm-hmm. And staff like it's you know so it's like the world is cool it's just within the world there's not that much going on so I don't yeah. I don't know yeah yeah so we'll see what happens um, Disco if you need to go let us know you can just hop off because it's yeah so I got a few minutes okay just... um, all right so I'll continue with my news I guess um, so uh, other show news are you done with your news Disco yeah okay. So other show news, um, the Blue Beetle that's coming to uh, HBO Max uh, has released some onset photos of what the costume looks like and what um, the actor looks in the costume, and it is very comic accurate, and it looks amazing. I uh, really enjoy what this thing looks like. Um, can't wait to see uh, the show, and hopefully the story is as good as the costume looks. Um, other show news. Speed Runner, uh, sorry, Speed Racer live action uh, series. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Speed <laughs> Racer. Speed Runner. Yeah. Uh, the confidence, beep beep. The confidence um, you came out with. Yeah, that. yeah. Speed That's, Runner. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Speed Racer live action series from J.J. Abrams coming to Apple TV Plus. Hmm. Now, we had a Speed Runner live action movie. Racer. Long time Racer? ago. <laughs> long time ago. Yeah. And uh, it was interesting. It was very fucking interesting. 
uh, the first time I remember the first time I watched that show, uh, that movie, I was like, what the fuck am I watching? Like it was almost, it was like an acid trip before I knew what an acid trip was. And then, and then like a couple of years later, I watched it again and like, I really paid attention and there was like some parts of it that I was like, all right, this is pretty cool. Like what they're trying to do here. But again, it was just like, it was just like, I think the movie was ahead of its time, but mm-hmm. I never saw uh, the movie. I did used to watch the show a little bit here and there, like the like the uh, anime. Yeah, I guess it's an anime, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah cartoon, it is an anime. Yeah, it's anime. Japanese. Yeah, I, I wasn't sure if it was Japanese. <laughs> yeah, I guess yeah, it is. It has to be. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, uh, JJ, I like JJ Abrams as a director and a producer, so I, I'm looking forward to see what he does with this uh, this property. Um, and is that it for my show news? Uh, that is it for my show news. I will get into some gaming news. Um, actually, wait, one more show news. Star Wars The Acolyte will turn parts of the old extended universe into canon again, um, which includes um, one of Mace Windu's special force powers, um, which he can, uh, he can, the force let him sense weaknesses in enemies or. Um, in um in like battles uh which made him a great tactician and one of the best lightsaber uh wielders in a fight um so that they they confirmed that that powers canon there was a specific name for it but i don't remember you guys obviously know my fucking um Oops. alzheimer's mm-hmm. uh in other star wars news star wars jedi fallen order oh, uh, Star speed Wars runner. Jedi Fallen Order, <laughs> yeah, speed runner. Order <laughs> sequel, Jedi follow. <laughs> yeah. Uh, sequel launching February or March 2023. Super excited about that. Um, and they announced it. Shit. Yeah. Did anybody have that in the league? I'm sorry, this is important. <laughs> 2023, not 2022. I know. Did anybody have it in the league? You? No, no. Henry? No. I don't think you did. Oh no, shit! Didn't. Yeah, he no, did he have it. You didn't have <laughs> it. No, he sequel. Didn't. I know Henry's games. Did you drop it? No, someone no, had I it. Never I, had think. it. I, I had it at one point, but I thought someone had picked it up. I did drop it a while ago just to make sure nobody counted. Yeah, it. yeah. Okay. I thought someone else got um, it. And, um, all right. So the PS5 Pro and new Xbox could be coming. In, all right. All right. See you, Disco. See you, Disco. Peace. I'm going to leave it open, though, so it can load. All right. Cool. Thanks. Um, PS5 Pro. And new Xbox could be coming in 2023 slash 2024. So this kind of... Because I was planning on getting one this year. um, And there's been a lot more restocks. And I was like, maybe I should get one. But I was just like, eh. Now that this news is coming, maybe I should wait. But if if Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order is coming out... The sequel is coming out 2023. I'm definitely going to need to get, uh, get a system... It's not and come if out. I have to, I will get the Series S. Huh? It's not going to come out. It's going to be delayed. Was that? Yeah, no, it's 100% going to be delayed. Then again, they've been working on this game for some time. I think it's going to be delayed, but I think it's just going to be late 2023. Listen, man, whenever that game comes out, I will be getting a new system to play. Because <laughs> okay. I really want to play this fucking game. And uh, the, So um, if it has to be a Series S Xbox to play this game, I will get that. Um. But yeah, what's it called? The this stuff, of course, is rumored, and it, this came to fruition by um, TCL was doing a press conference. They make TVs, and mm-hmm. in the thing they were talking about in terms of gaming, how their TVs were going to correlate to the different consoles coming out, and they're speculating yeah. that uh, that by twenty twenty three, twenty twenty four, that we're going to get the new series whatever for Xbox and the PS five Pro. Um, so this was like everybody saw this was like what the hell is TCL talking about? Nobody confirmed this. The TCL is like we're just we're just projecting, guys. <laughs> we're okay. just projecting. And 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 this I guess this the timeline makes sense for the life cycle of a console, right? Yeah, like three yeah. four uh, years in. Yeah, because it, it makes sense, but this time is a little bit weird because of the I was lack about of restocking. Be, yeah, well, because of the lack of computer chips in general. And well, yeah, like, um, just supply and like supply. Um, uh, fuck, what is it called? The supply chain. Yeah. Um, so it'll, it'll be interesting. But either way, whether I'll be getting the pro or the regular, um, now that this game is coming out, hopefully if it does actually come out in February or March or if it does get delayed to later on in the year, whenever it comes out, I'm going to need a new system to play it because I enjoyed the hell out of Fallen Order. 
and uh, I want to play this fucking sequel real bad. So, mm-hmm. super excited for that. And that is the end of my news. Okay. Um, I do have wrestling news. It's really short. Not much uh, happening. So, um, one rumor. So, last week I talked about, it's not a rumor, Ric Flair. Mm-hmm. Having a yes. match at the age of 73 years old, uh, trying to fight a bunch of other old people. So, yeah. a couple of names have been coming out as to who Ric Flair might potentially wrestle. One person was Scott Steiner, who I don't have his age in front of me, but I know he's in his 60s. Uh, the man used to be a walking steroid. And um, S- Scott Steiner quoted, uh, said, if I get in the ring with Ric Flair, I will kill him. Uh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I don't think he's going to wrestle him. Um, okay. Also, Scott Steiner. I don't know. If, then again, if Ric Flair could wrestle, I'm sure Scott could probably do it too. I don't know. They're just. I mean, he looked good guys. in that photo I found with him with the trainer. Like he looked Jay Lethal healthy from and Elizabeth, strong. New Jersey. Huh? That was Jay Lethal from Elizabeth, New Jersey. If it's if um, it's the one when they were wrestling. No, no, no. no this no. is uh no. He was he took a selfie with the trainer and he was like flexing. Yeah. And um. He he looked fucking good and and ho- I was ho- I I did I was making sure this was a recent picture, um, of him. But yeah, he his face looked really old, but his body looked like it was in good shape. Oh, he's still in great shape. Yeah. Really. And yeah. uh, he had some muscle on him for being seventy three, and it's really hard to keep your muscle on at that age. Like yeah. you have to be taking like testosterone, um, like you have to re- be replenishing your testosterone and like um, I'm not saying he's taking um steroids. Um, but when you get older, like your testosterone levels naturally get lower, so it's yeah. it's harder to build muscle. I mean that, or he's just the nature boy. <laughs> he, one hundred percent the nature boy. But um, yeah, so that's supposed to happen. Um, then some people are like, maybe he's gonna fight Hulk Hogan. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> is it so? I'd see that. Hulk Hogan, since that with that <laughs> mark. I, oh, he can. Yeah. Well, he said there. another one. No, no, it's the it same one the that he said forever one. ago. Yeah. Oh, he, I, think I mean, he's he never been since? not allowed to wrestle. It all depends on who's willing to promote him. Like, WWE mm-hmm. brought him back. They were just like, hey, he's cool, right, guys? And then the audience booed him. But, yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> but um, no, so there's, there's people are saying it could be Hogan, which I doubt. Um, and then there's there's going back to the Rock and Roll Express, which I feel like makes the most sense, which I talked about last week. They're both in their late 60s, um, but they still wrestle on a regular occasion. They've only been wrestling for about six decades, and I don't think I'm exaggerating when I say that. <laughs> but no. um, I think what the, the best thing that they could do is you get somebody in there who is a regular active wrestler who's maybe below the age of 50, mm-hmm. um, partner up with Flair to wrestle these other guys who they still, they're more active than Flair is in the ring, and then maybe you do a match like that. Um, so I think that's yeah, what they're going to do. Yeah, make sure someone... That isn't gonna end up him, end with him getting hurt because they make yeah. a mistake or something. Like so that's what that's they do. Seasoned. Yeah, they, they do that a lot. Uh, same, they did the same thing when Shaquille O'Neal wrestled in AEW. He was in a tag exactly. team match, and you know he was in there with Cody Rhodes. Cody knew how to make him look oh, good, of course. Yeah. So come on, you know, it's so Cody it's Rhodes. exactly. So they're gonna he started uh, AEW with two other wrestlers. Come on, let's go. You're close enough. It's cool. <laughs> hey man, hey, I, I tried to listen. Hey man, that's what I was like. You got it. You got it. I'm, I'm letting yeah, you get that. That's a win. That's a win for you. Speed runner. So there's that. Um, then beep, beep. Uh, <laughs> that's the road runner. That's long. Hey, you know what? <laughs> beep beep. I don't care. I don't care if I'm wrong. Just it is what it is. New What's Japan Pro runner? Wrestling has the best of the <laughs> Super Juniors still ongoing. Um, right now. Uh, it's we're, we're 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 about halfway there. We're about halfway there. Uh, the A block and B block. You kind of see where things are going. Um, I have a couple predictions, predictions on who could potentially go ahead and uh, make it to the finals and maybe win. So, for the A block, uh, right now Ace Austin is leading, but I I could definitely see it go to um, Taiji Ichimori, Hiromu Takahashi, and then I think Show and Yo are both going to go pretty far. So between those four, uh, for now, for Block A, I'm going with one of them. Uh, That's four out of ten. I will give better predictions as we get closer. Block B, I'm looking at El Desperado, El Fantasmo. They're both in the lead. I think Robbie Eagles is going to have a good showing as well. And uh, Doki's out there just hitting people with the dookie. You know, so he's doing his thing. (laughs) And um, very much... Hanako-san on the ass. (laughs) Oh, God. (laughs) Check out last week's podcast, guys. A lot of... A lot of... A lot of stuff going on. 
A lot of toilets. There's so much toilet <laughs> information I looked up for that episode, and I wouldn't change a thing. Um, and then last, and definitely not least, uh, so last week I talked about how Sasha Banks and Naomi, WWE Tag Team Champions, walked out, left their titles, um, and they walked out right before an episode of Raw started. Um, so wow. they have both been officially suspended indefinitely by WWE. Mm. Um, so the titles are now vacant. They said that they're going to try to do a, a tournament to see who's going to become the new women's champions, which I think is ironic because they were the only women's tag team in all of WWE. They don't have any tag teams. I digress. Um, I think they've proven their point. <laughs> <laughs> so there's that. And uh, just recently, there was a posting by one Snoop Dogg of his cousin um, with his cousin, Sasha Banks, uh, about how they're apparently going to try to work into making some type of NFT for banks so she could start making money outside of wrestling which people are speculating if she can do that because she has the star power and she has been in a little show called the mandalorian which we've talked about maybe mm. she doesn't need to wrestle anymore so i don't know uh, that's yeah. that's something that could be going on but um that's all i got for the wrestling news oh I'm also big pay-per-view that... coming up which Can't one wait. AEW. Yeah, i'm still surprised nfts are still going still around what were you saying uh, henry uh which one SummerSlam? No, no, I'm talking about good ones, Henry. I'm talking about AEW Double or Nothing, not any of the WWE pay-per-views. <laughs> <laughs> uh, main event, CM Punk versus Hangman Adam Page. Uh, it's it's going to be a banger. I uh, can't wait. can't wait for that show. But, uh, 100%. Yep, that's all my wrestling. Henry, you got any news for us? News? Hmm... There is a new <laughs> model kit coming out for anyone that's interested in Gundams. It's called a uh, Master yes. Grade Impulse EX. Yeah. Nice. And it's cool looking. Look it up. I gotta, I gotta try one of those one day. I, I love building things, and uh, it would that would seem like something in in my alley. But yeah, no, for I some just, reason I never got into them. I just love it because I can just like tune out. You know, just I'm just like yeah. sitting right here just doing stuff. Uh, you've well, seen when my I used to do result. models first. Yeah. When I do models for school and stuff, that's that was me. It was just like you're you're, you're building something. You kind of like you zone out of everything and you're just concentrating on that. And it's like it's very like peaceful. Yep. Um, hobby and um, yeah, I I would love to get into it. It's just like if I don't even have the fucking time to sit down and do shit like that. Like so. Yeah. Yeah, because uh, the one that I show you, uh, I send you guys a video. Of the one that mm -hmm. lit up the Gundam, yeah, that one yeah. took me a hundred hours to do, like everything. Jesus, damn! Like building it, nice. sanding it down, decaling it, and then setting up the lights. And just hundred hours. <laughs> I mean, you see the quality though. Like yeah. you see the yeah, quality. No, it looked, you know, it looked you... fucking great. Yeah. yeah. Oh boy. Yeah, I can't Man. build shit. <laughs> well, there's anymore. instructions, no? No, no, no. Uh, That's long. I've had my time in the sun. It's fine. I never belonged to the sun. I was born in the darkness. Yeah. I didn't see the light until I was a man, and by then it was blinding. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> All right, well, that's it for this episode. So thank you for joining us for another episode of Los Wise Guys Podcast. If you like what you hear, follow us on social media. Like, subscribe, share, rate, and review. Don't, go, don't forget to go to our YouTube channel. Check out our videos. Give those a like. Throw some comments in there. Engage with us. Uh, interact with love, you people interact with us we're out there <laughs> yeah yeah we love uh we love talking to anybody who um would like to talk to us so you know let's let's engage let's build a community guys um yeah go check out our website and um thank you for listening have a great week